I've just finished tracking the careers of 4,000 young players to see what I can learn about new gens and youth development in Football Manager. The first one is trajectory. This is where I work out how good a player needs to be to get into my first team and then work backwards from there to see how good they need to be as young players. You can put some numbers around that, which I'll go into in this video. The second is the pathway players are on. This is where I look to get my squad building and club infrastructure right so that players get the playing time and training they need to develop out their potential. Let's get into it by looking at a specific player. This is Felix. I've rather fallen for Felix. Felix is the exact kind of player I'm looking for. Look at that agility. Look at those reflexes. Felix went on from being a 17-year-old new gen at PSV to making over 300 Premier League appearances. He's the best player in the class of 2025, which is just a fancy name for the new gens that came into my save in the 2025 calendar year. I've been tracking those new gens throughout their careers using the app I've developed, which is based on coding in Python. The app thinks that of the 4,833 players in the class of 2025, only 35 are good enough for the Premier League, and of those, only 11 would be good enough to play in the knockout stages of the Champions League. There are more videos on my channel that can get you up and running on the app and the scoring system that I use. Also, you can watch this interview that I recently did with Zealand. His video is a bit like the ones I make, only considerably more entertaining. Anyway, here's Felix again, this time as a graph. The line is how good Felix is over time. On the left-hand side of the graph, Felix is 17 years old. On the right-hand side, he's 37. Because Felix is a goalkeeper, he developed all the way through to about 29 years old. If he was an outfield player, his development would have flattened out sooner, at about 24, 25, maybe 26. To give us a benchmark for Felix, the dots on the right tell us how good the starting goalkeepers are in the Championship, the Premier League and the last eight of the Champions League, again calculated by blending together the player's attributes. You can see that when Felix got to Championship level, aged about 19 years old, he was loaned to Huddersfield, Stoke and then Hull. After that, aged 22, he was good enough to go back and play for PSV, which led to more development, and then at age 26, a big money move to Liverpool, where he continued to develop into one of the best goalkeepers in the world. Felix has enjoyed a perfect career arc. Regular minutes pitched at just the right level at every step of his career. If you look at it in the app, Felix was considered to be the number one new gen goalkeeper in his year group, and sure enough, he went on to be the number one goalkeeper in his class. Conventional scouting also thought Felix was pretty good. Not quite the best player in his class, but close. I think the potential star ratings scouts give you are important and I always use them. But what I also do is make sure players have got the key attributes I'm looking for, as often I find the star ratings don't focus on that as much as I want them to. I also make sure players have got one of the better personalities in the game, the ones with high professionalism and decent determination. You can see from here the prospects that flame out tend to be the ones that don't have good personalities. You can use this calculator to gauge the likely hidden ratings for players. I'll put the link in the description. You're looking for decent ambition and determination, and then as much professionalism as possible. Professionalism is the most important one. In the app, this is the scores you'd expect to see from a Premier League player at each position, and then working backwards, the score you'd expect to see at each age level for each position. If you're not using the app, just think of these scores as a mash together of the player's attributes. So a decent Premier League player will have a score somewhere in the 13, 14 area. If you look at their actual attributes, you'll probably see the better ones into the sort of 15, 16, maybe the attributes that are more important for their position. And then you'll see other attributes that are lower, 10, 11, 12. But overall, if you blend it all together, you get a score of sort of 13, 14. Attributes for players typically grow between about three and four points between being a new gen and their peak. So if you're looking to get a player that gets to 13 or 14 at their peak, then if you work backwards as a new gen, they need to be something like 10 or 11. It's obviously not absolutely like that in all cases. There's variation. Some players can grow, some attributes can grow higher, maybe five, six, even seven. But overall, on average, what you would typically expect from a good player who's going to go on and play in the Premier League is that their attributes will grow between new gen and peak between something like three or four. So based on the 4,000 players I've looked at, I've tried to figure out what's typical at each position 
for a 16 and 17 year old new gen who's going to go on and be a Premier League level player. And then I've put together some filters which reflect that for each position. And those are downloadable in the description if you'd like to use those in your saves. You'll see the filters focus on what I think are the key attributes for each role in the game. Some interesting nuances that come out when you track attribute growth. Uh, one is that jumping reach grows quicker than height does. Height does grow a little bit, but jumping reach grows more. And I've had some helpful feedback from comments on my YouTube videos uh, that suggest that focusing on jumping reach is more important than focusing on height. Uh, and so I will be continuing to focus on jumping reach from now on. Do let me know in the comments if you disagree with that. And then the other one is that work rate and teamwork, they can grow, but they grow considerably less than the other attributes. And so in particular, if you're looking for work rate, which I think is an important attribute for midfielders and, and fullbacks and wingbacks, then you do just make sure you've got it in the player really when they come into your squad, uh, as opposed to trying to develop it. I know there are ways around trying to develop work rate by criticizing players, training, stuff like that. But if you're just looking to stick to trying to develop the work rate they've got, uh, it's not going to grow much. So you've got to make sure the player's got it. If you want to make a short list of the new gens that have been generated in your save, create a new short list and then go to the world icon up in the top right here and click through to youth intake. Click on a player, then scroll down holding the shift button, then click on the next one to select like this. You can't select all the new gens at once. You can only select up to 500 at a time. So you have to work your way down and do 500 at a time into your shortlist. So we've covered working out whether players are on track to make your first team, whether they're on the right trajectory. Now let's have a think about the pathway they're on and what things we can do to help players realize their potential. So first we can get squad building right. And by that I mean looking at my youth team and trying to figure out which of these guys are building towards getting into my first 11 and which of these guys are just here to sell for profit and which guys are neither of those things and they're just going to be released and then just making sure I prioritize the potential first teamers and get other players out of their way if needs be so that those potential first teamers are getting the maximum under 23 and under 18 playing time and then also the the coaching there's only so much coaching and so if you've got loads and loads and loads of players they won't benefit from coaching as much. So just making sure you don't have too many players and there aren't players in the way of your top players. Also, I just make sure that the, whoever the best staff member is uh, is giving me the player report so the potential star ratings are as accurate as possible and are being updated in real time as well as possible. Second one for me is playing time. So from age 15 to 17, just having your players sitting in the under 18s is fine and they'll develop but above the age of 18 players need playing time and that playing time needs to be set at the right level so for a while it might be an under 23 premier league team but eventually it's going to be the championship or you know or higher if you look at felix for example uh, he needed championship minutes quite young for the playing time to be set at the right level so the playing time yeah it needs to be the set at the right level but the player also needs to produce a good average rating to progress so you need to make it the best club you can find in the best league they can play in I do send players on loan I don't send loads of players on loan but if I've got players I think might make it through to the first team I do it and I also do it with uh, players that I'm basically fattening up for sale um, because I think that it's going to increase their value the rule of thumb for me I'm looking for players are going to play at least 15 minutes a game get average ratings in the high sixes because getting good average ratings seems to help development and I want to see something like 20, 20 or 30 matches a season, so plenty of minutes. If I'm subbing youngsters onto my own team, I try to do it as early as I can in the game, not just give them 15 minutes, maybe try and give them a half or something. I certainly try to get them on once I'm two goals ahead. If I'm loaning them out, I'm trying to send them to a winning team because there'll be higher average ratings. Uh, I want regular starter or better. And ideally, I want good training facilities, but I do think the training facilities probably matter less than the quality of the minutes i'm mainly focused on quality of minutes the quality of the division they're going to on a winning team that's what i'm looking for i also try to find uh, or build a relationship with an affiliate club in the div division below my division that i can send players to uh, you can send up to four i think and so i try to do that and obviously if we send plenty of good players it'll probably 
lead to that player that club doing well and getting good average ratings the problem becomes at some point in a save your affiliate will get too good too quickly if you send them really good young players uh, you, you, i also try to make sure the under 18s and tw- under 23s are a pretty good and winning games so so those minutes are as valuable for the players in the club also particularly the under 18s so just have a player or two at each position not too many so you're not blocking pathways but not so few that the um, that there are grey players coming in. Third one, training facilities. I think these matter more than the actual training you do, um, or at least that's how I've always thought about it. I upgrade these as a priority over upgrading the youth facilities because the youth facilities are about, as I understand it, improving the current ability of the youth intake, but the training facilities help develop the over 16 players you can actually see. So I wait till my club is rich and has a high reputation before I upgrade the youth facilities. But as I make my way up the leagues, I'm trying to upgrade the training facilities first and do that whenever I can. I think not just for developing players, I think having better training facilities helps you build your club's reputation and it widens the pool of players interested in in joining the club. So I always do training facilities first and I do think that they can really help with development. Okay, fourth training i set general training to be done by my staff but you can of course use more optimized schedules there's the one that evidence-based football manager does the one that rdf tactics does Uh, so you could use something like that now i set, i do set individual training and i set it to the position that a player is going to play in my tactics so they're molding towards the roles i want them to get better at and if their pace is borderline i'll set the additional focus to quickness um, I'm not sure how much difference it makes. Other than that, I tend not to go um, too far with the additional focuses. And I don't think about traits until players are in the first team. I hire the best coaches I can find. I make sure the determination, the level of discipline and motivating are high. I auto set the coaches. And then for the under 18 coaches, I do make sure their personalities are good. And I do that with the head of youth development also. Just make sure they've got a good personality with as much professionalism as possible because I think that's the main hidden rating for development and ideally if the head of youth development I try to get them to have a preferred style that fits my tactic just to increase the chances that the new gens fit the roles that I'll be wanting them to play in and fifth mentoring which I set to auto do all of that and you'll have a steady supply of youth talent coming through to your first team but there is one final question which is worth thinking about which is should we be doing youth development at all if you look at the example of brentford when they were a championship club they decided to close their academy and replace it with something called brentford b which was a reserve side mainly populated with players they'd found from here and there free transfer players they'd picked up from other clubs maybe that had been released by academies they did that because they took the view that academies for them were a waste of resources they were so much better at player recruitment than they were at youth development that they decided to simply stop having an academy. If they had players that developed well in their academy, they were being poached by high reputation clubs. And now Brentford has got an academy again, not least because it's a requirement, I believe, of UEFA to play in European football. For me, as an English club coming through the English system, it only really begins to make sense once you get close to European football and you need to meet the homegrown player restrictions of European football. Before that, I tend not to do too much youth development, but at that stage, there absolutely is a point where it makes sense to develop young players and look for those wonder kids that can turn into superstars when you haven't got enough club reputation to simply go and buy them. Anyway, I think I'll leave it there for this video. Of course, like and subscribe if you want to see more uh, and if you enjoy the video. Thank you for watching and I shall see you in the next one.